every article wants to be read. Otherwise, what's the point in writing it? You want readers. Some stories are easier to write about than others. For example, Mo Farah becomes double Olympic champion or David Cameron is elected the new prime minister. Big events becoming big news. It's what organizations like this, The Guardian and The Observer, thrive on. But whatever the story, big or small, the same rules, the same principles apply. What you're writing needs to be clear, it needs to be lively, it needs to be understandable. So how do you do it? Well, that's why we're here, because we're going to meet someone now who specializes in writing about big events, big stories. He's the Guardian's chief sports correspondent. His name is Owen Gibson, and we're going to meet him now. If anyone knows how to write a good article, this is the man. So how do you do it? Well, the five building blocks that are all taught in, in journalism college are the who, what, where, when and why. Um, I think they're the building blocks of any, of any news story, um, and, and that still remains true. You know, you've got to get out there, experience things and talk to people. How do you engage a reader, though, straight away? How do you grab them? Well, the intro is, is incredibly important. So that's the first two or three paragraphs of your story that really has to, to grab the reader, almost to have to tell the story in those first two or three paragraphs and then go on to expand on it further down. So uh, the, the introduction, those first few paragraphs and the headline on the story are all important in terms of grabbing the reader's attention. And that's true whether it's printed on the internet or whether it's printed in a newspaper. How easy is it to come up with a headline? Who does that? Do you do that or does someone else do that? No, thankfully that's not my job. Um, so I, I write the story and then it goes through a production process whereby um, one of our, they're called sub-editors, they will put the headline on it and they'll try and distill the story into, into a few words, um, even fewer words if you work on a, a tabloid newspaper and come up with a, a pun or a play on words or, or a grabby headline that will really sort of draw the reader in. What about quotes? What about facts? What about statistics? How do you weave them in without completely overwhelming someone? Well, that's the, that's the way you tell the story. I mean, it's all about the balance, really. It's a bit like a, a recipe. You're kind of looking for the, for the best balance of, of quotes, of, of statistics, of, of reported speech, and, and actually of, of putting things in your own words and, and distilling them down. So, so you need a bit of all of those things, but, but not too much of any one. As well as the all-important five Ws, there's also the H word, isn't there? How? So, so how you put a story together, of course, is, is, is really important. I mean, I think for me, it's all about getting out there, meeting people, talking to as many people as possible, um, getting as wide a range of views as possible in order to pick up the sort of information that will make an interesting story. And that could either come from a, a press conference or an interview, but it also comes from just speaking to people around you and, um, and, and using that information, taking it back to the office and, and putting it into your story. Sometimes you'll get people saying, this is on the record. Other times they'll say, this has to be off the record. What's the difference there? Can you explain that? Well, when somebody tells you something on the record in a, in a sort of formal interview situation, they'll expect their, those words to be used with their name and their position against them. So that'll be a, that'll be a quote that you can use in your story. If they, if they say to you, I'd like this to be off the record, it's information that they're quite happy for you to know, but they, but they, don't, want their, they don't want their name anywhere near it. Uh, often it's, uh, it's information that, that is actually more, more useful and more, more interesting than what they're prepared to tell you on the record. But as a journalist, you have to weigh quite carefully why they're telling you this information and I think as far as possible you want to encourage people to go on the record with their thoughts because that's the most valuable information to your readers. They, they know what this person's saying and, and they know who said it and when. That's interesting what you say about you need to know why someone's saying something. How do you balance opinion to make sure that you're giving both sides of a story, maybe three or four sides of a story depending on the type of story you're writing, but also that you don't give any extra bias or favour mm -hmm to someone within the tale. It's part of your job as a journalist to, to weigh up that information and to, and to come up with a, a version of the truth that you think you know, you're happy to tell your readers. But the, the important thing is to make sure that everyone does have their say. So if there are two sides of an argument or often three or four sides of an argument, it's important that you reflect that as far as possible, particularly in a news story, which is supposed to be as far as possible a sort of a, a, an unbiased account. You talked there about having three or four sides of the story. You've also, sometimes, you've got a, got a deadline. How exciting is that? How much does the adrenaline flow? How difficult is that? How easy did you find to, to write a thousand words, 1500 words in maybe less than an hour? It's one of the things that comes with experience and actually it's one of the great things about being a journalist is that sort of adrenaline rush when you've got an hour or 45 minutes to the deadline and, and something's like either a news event's happened or you're at a big sporting event and you know you've only got a certain amount of time before the press's roll uh, and that's when you really sort of are in your corn if you like and I think some of that comes with experience um, but also you know it's one of the more sort of instinctive things about about being a journalist and about writing is that you know 
doing it to doing it to these tight deadlines and and that sort of you know it's a cliche about being the, the first draft of history I mean you, at those times you really feel it at a big event like an Olympics or whatever. So if you had any advice for aspiring BNY Mellon young sports reporters what would it be what how would you how would you sell it to them? Well, remember those five W's that we talked about at the beginning, but also, you know, have, a, have an air, air of curiosity, get out there, speak to people, and, and just have your, your ears open, really. And that's the most important trait you can have as a, as a reporter or a writer, is that sort of innate curiosity. Some fascinating insights there from Owen Gibson, who knows what it's like to report to a deadline on some really, really big stories. So, so far, we've found out about finding news, gathering news, and then also planning an article. In the next film, we're going to discuss how to write the article and also how to lay it out so that you involve the reader and also make them enjoy it because that's what it's all about.